Hi there, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Today we're going to be talking about Merlot as part of the A to Z of wine. One of the wines that for me was probably my in uh, into winemaking, a very easy, very approachable and certainly something that I would have sought out in my earlier wine drinking days. Even if I was in a store and there were lots available, I probably looked to Merlot because I knew it, I knew I liked it. If you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm the Grape Explorer. I do wine education, product reviews and lots of wine tasting. So if that's your thing, consider subscribing. Yeah, definitely one of my favourites from, from early on and something I've always gone back to over the years if I'm looking for something nice and simple to enjoy. And Merlot, of course, is something that's renowned the world over. And I'm going to come on to the global growth shortly. But first, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of the history about this grape. Merlot is the offspring of Cabernet Franc and Magdalene Noir de Chirance, which means that Merlot is actually a half-sibling to Cabernet Sauvignon, whose parentage is Cabernet Franc. The earliest recorded mention of Merlot was in 1784, under a slightly different spelling. And then 40 years later, the word Merlot, correctly spelt, appeared in an article on Medoc Wine, where it was described that the grape was named after the local blackbird who enjoyed eating the grapes. It was grown throughout the 19th century into the 20th century, regularly planted on the Medoc in the left, where plantings were increased, then moving, of course, over to the right bank, where it's popularly grown today as well. But interestingly, in the mid 20th century, after some setbacks from the 1956 frosts and a number of vintages in the 1960s that were poor due to rot, um, authorities in Bordeaux banned new plantings of Merlot completely between 1970 and 1975. Though of course today it continues to thrive in France, uh, not just in Bordeaux, but in lots of other regions as well. And so we're going to move on to where it's gr grown globally, in short, everywhere. Um, but let's take a look at some of the specific countries I've picked out. It is actually the most commonly grown grape in France, the most planted varietal and you can of course find it in Bordeaux, but it's also very popular down in places like the Languedoc, as well as certain areas of southwest France as well. It's grown in Italy, where two thirds of the Merlot grown, it goes into what are known as the Super Tuscans, these blends. In Spain, you can find it in a number of areas and a number of different climates, the Mediterranean climate of Catalonia and the continental climate of Castilla de la Mancha, for example. Popular, of course, across the United States of America, where California and Washington State are probably growing the most. And then, of course, you can find it in Australia. I've picked out Barossa Valley and McLaren Vale just as a couple of examples. There are, of course, more than that. And because I didn't have enough room on the slide, I haven't even gotten into New Zealand, Hawke's Bay, Argentina, Mendoza, and Chile in a number of regions called Cagua, Casablanca, for example. Merlot is grown extensively around these different areas. So it really is a global grape. So what are some of the growing characteristics of Merlot in the vineyard? It really thrives in cold soil, particularly the clay-based soils. And actually, when you get into Bordeaux, some of those soils are clay-based, which is why it does so well. One of its hazards is that the vines tend to bud earlier in the vineyard cycle compared to other grapes, which does give it some risk to cold frost. And I think where we mentioned the 1956 frosts in Bordeaux decimating Merlot, that's, that's a really good example of, of how it can be at risk. It's also susceptible to downy mildew and can be infected by leafhopper insect varieties who I assume just enjoy munching on it. One of the characteristics of the Merlot grape is that it can overripen quite quickly once it hits its initial ripeness, sometimes a few days after its peak ripeness. So you have to be really careful when it comes to harvesting. And as I say here, the winemaker therefore has a choice when to harvest. Some are going to favour early picking, which is going to allow the wines to have that more acidity and finesse. And others are going to be picking late because they want to add additional fruit body to the wine that comes with that little bit of overripeness. And again, different wine producers are going to be working in different ways, dependent upon the expression of Merlot they're looking for, what their consumers like, they're going to make wines that satisfy that, that drive from the consumer, that demand. And of course, that means that it comes in a variety of styles. So we've harvested our berries, whether early or late. We've now moved them into the winery. What type of wines can we expect from Merlot? Well, 
Compared to Cabernet Sauvignon, it has lighter tannins and acidity, though it has more body and higher alcohol. And this is probably why it goes so well with Cabernet Sauvignon. It's why you find Bordeaux style blends all over the world. They're really well complemented, and of course they are related. The best Merlots are often aged in oak, which can give them a velvety quality with some additional aroma characteristics. The lighter tannins can help to produce simple wines for bulk production. Lots of the wine in supermarkets, which is Merlot, is often of a cheaper bulk style. And there is such a thing as white Merlot, similar to white Zinfandel. It is a lesser known style. Uh, the grapes are crushed and after a very brief skin contact, the resulting juice is run off the must and then it is fermented. White Merlot isn't actually something that I've seen here in the UK. Let me know down below if you've tried it. I want to know what you think. So next, of course, we've made our wine. What can we expect from it in the glass? I'll go through this one in a minute. Well, it all depends on whether we're talking about a cooler climate Merlot or a warmer climate Merlot. Get ready for my always fantastic fruit pictures. In a cooler climate, you can expect things like raspberry, strawberry, red plum, and perhaps green olive. That's not an eye on a stick. In warmer climates, we're then really talking black fruit, and black fruit will dominate. Black plum, black cherry, black berry. And then you've got your wines where you may have picked those berries late, they may have got overripe. That can bring out things like fruitcake, as well as chocolatey aromas. So Merlot can offer a number of styles, a number of aromas, and I think that's what makes its appeal so broad. What have I got in the glass today then? Well, I actually went to the simpler end of Merlot and, and to some extent the cheaper end of Merlot. This is a McGuigan Reserve Merlot from South Australia. It was only seven pounds, pretty good value for money. It's from the 2019 vintage, 12.5% alcohol. So pretty low really for, for a red wine there. What do I have in the glass? This is definitely a simple wine. Simple aromas of some of those lighter red fruits for me. I got things like strawberry and red cherry on this one. And a slightly darker cherry note as well. It, it depends where you sit on the cherry scale. But it is a simple wine, and that means it's just really approachable. You know, when I had a sip, when I had a sip, sorry, you never talk with your mouth full of wine. When I had a sip, very light tannin, quite light body, probably medium minus on the body, but a nice finish and very, very fruity. That's what's enjoyable about this. And that's why for seven pounds, I'm always pretty happy with McGuigan. You know what you're getting into. Nice, simple wine, easy and enjoyable, can be enjoyed at any time. Perfect for when you're editing videos after you've recorded. And just an enjoyable glass that I'm having. But what's interesting is this one was seven pounds. And of course, not all Merlot cost seven pounds. Some of them are a little bit more expensive. And I did go onto a local website for Berry Brothers, who are a wine merchant here in the UK, to get the price of a bottle of Petrus from the right bank of Bordeaux, just to get a comparison to how much Merlot can actually go for. Uh, Chateau Petrus is a Bordeaux wine estate located in Pomerol. Uh, it is a small estate, its wines are always 100% Merlot. And just for information, the 1982 vintage, a single bottle will set you back almost 6,000 um, pounds. Wow, uh, that is an incredible amount. And of course, I've gone for an older bottle of wine there, but it just gives you some indication about how Merlot isn't just for cheap bulk production, how some of the finest wines in the world are Merlot. And that for me speaks to how versatile this grape is. I hope you enjoyed this look at Merlot. Let me know your thoughts around this grape in the comments sections below and any of your recommendations. For now, I'm gonna say cheers. I'm the Grape Explorer. See you again soon. Cheers.